Hello everyone. Welcome to the final section of Perio question paper discussion. I'll be discussing the final eight treatment aspect chapters today. So coming to the first chapter that is plaque control. Describe in detail uh, the mechanical plaque control measures and chlorhexidine has an anti-plaque agent. So for this you have to refer chapter 35 plaque biofilm control in Carenza page number 363. So first you have to define what is plaque control and then you have to write the types of plaque control that is mechanical and chemical and give few examples for each. For mechanical like toothbrush, power toothbrush, internet lathes or litigation whereas for chemical you have to write the different types of mouth rinses. And then coming to the second part of the question that is chlorhexidine has an anti-plaque agent for that you have to first write what is chlorhexidine then you have to write about the dosage that is uh, two daily rinses with 10 ml of 0.2 percent chlorhexidine whereas in us and all they recommend about 0.12 percentage of chlorhexidine and then what happens when high concentration of chlorhexidine acts on bacteria what happens when low concentration acts and then uh, moving on to the second question uh, the factors to be considered before recommending a modification in patient brushing technique okay so for here also first you have to define what is plaque control then types of plaque control mention the different brushing techniques and for whom it is recommended that is in case of patients with periodontal disease we recommend circular technique whereas patient with gingival recession we recommend stillman's technique and for patients after periodontal surgery we recommend the charters technique the most commonly used brushing technique is bass technique and also for whom the power toothbrushes are recommended so all these things should be written moving on to the next one chlorhexidine that is already discussed then coming to classify antimicrobial agents with example so here you have to write about antibiotics uh, so this you must have studied in pharmacology in second year itself so like antimicrobial can be divided into bacteriostatic, bacteriocidal and you have to give examples for each. For example, like bacteriostatic can be tetracycline and cidal, bacteriocidal is penicillin, amphicillin, amoxicillin, etc. And also you can classify according to the compounds that is metronidazole belongs to nitroimidazole, ciprofloxacin uh, belongs to quinolone and uh, erythromycin and azithromycin belongs to macrolides. Okay, so like that you have to classify the antimicrobial agents. Moving on to next question that is subgingival irrigation. For this you can find answer in chapter 35 plaque biofilm control page number 374. So first you have to define what is oral irrigation and then you have to write about two types of oral irrigation that is supragingival and subgingival irrigation. Then you have to write about the mechanism of action of subgingival irrigation. And then what is the technique of subgingival irrigation? That is enough. Then uh, desensitizing agents I have already discussed in uh, paper 1 uh, in the perio first discussion video. Moving on to the next question that is gingivectomy. So define gingivectomy, describe in detail uh, the indications, contraindications and procedure. And then next question is indication, contraindication, advantage, disadvantage and healing. Whereas the third question is uh, explain the gingivectomy procedures by various methods. Okay, so uh, for all together I will give a single uh, reply. So you have to refer chapter 45 gingival surgical techniques page number 492. First define gingivectomy, write the indications and contraindications. And for the procedure of gingivectomy, they have mentioned five steps in Carenza. Mention all those. And for healing of after gingivectomy, they have given in page number 493. So healing can be divided into like five steps. First, you have to write about the initial response. Like immediately after gingivectomy, what is the initial response of the gingiva? What happens then after 24 hours and then after three days? Then after two months, uh, two weeks, what happens? That is the surface epithelium is completely formed. And then uh, what happens after seven weeks? That is the connective tissue is completely healed. So, so that is the, about the healing part. Then coming to the various methods that is also given in the same chapter, page number 494. 
uh, various method includes the scalpel method of course that is already discussed then you have to mention about the electro surgery chemo surgery and the laser next chapter is periodontal flap define and classify flap discuss in detail about modified widman flap so first you have to define what is a flap and then you have to classify flap so flap classification is given according to three that is first one is flap exposure after reflection and then second classification is based on flap placement after surgery and third uh, classification is based on the management of papilla so all these three classifications should be mentioned for this answer then coming to modified Whitman flap you have to first tell what is modified Whitman flap give a small introduction about it and then you have to write the seven steps involved in modified Whitman flap and diagram is a must for this question then coming to short essay what are the indications of flap surgery discuss in detail about apically displaced flap so for this you have to refer chapter 46 periodontal flap so in the same uh, in the first page itself they have given the indications of flap surgery eight points are there now moving on to apically displaced flap first you have to give a small introduction about apically displaced flap and then you have to write up five steps of apically displaced flap and then the diagram then coming to next question that is incisions in flap surgery so for that you have to refer chapter 46 periodontal flap page number 498 uh, so the incisions they are mainly of two types horizontal and vertical horizontal can be further divided into internal bevel incision and clavicular incision you have to write uh, like two three lines about each of them next question is also the same various incision used in flap surgery and then apically portion flap also i have already discussed next chapter is regeneration first one gtr so gtr is a very important question so you should know what all you have to write under this question so first you have to define what is regeneration and then you have to come down write about what is gtr then the principle of gtr and then the classification of gtr that is the uh, absorbable and non resorbable membranes and then you have to write about the indications and contraindications and then you have to write about the surgical procedure of gtr there are like some six to seven steps for that and then lastly you have to write the factors affecting the clinical outcome of after gtr placement and that can be divided into barrier dependent and barrier independent factors so all these headings should be included when gtr is asked as a long essay uh, moving on to next question define new attachment enumerate various methods to achieve new attachment and describe about graft associated new attachment methods so first you have to define what is new attachment so new attachment is nothing but the embedding of new periodontal ligament into new cementum that was previously denuded by disease and then after that you have to write about like there are to achieve new attachment there are two types we can achieve by two methods first is graft associated reconstructive procedures and non graft associated reconstructive procedures then graft associated reconstructive procedures is the bone graft materials you have to write about all those classification and in detail about them and then coming to known graft associated reconstructive procedures you have to write about the root bio modification you can write about even scaling root planing curettage then uh, lenap that is laser assisted new attachment procedure and also you can include gtr so all these things comes under the methods to achieve new attachment then classify bone grafts describe the treatment option aid to furcation defect for this you have to refer chapter 49 periodontal regeneration they have given uh, the classification of bone graft so three classifications has been given first is based on origin and then second one is based on the mode of action that is osteoconductive inductive okay and then comes based on the rate of resorption like uh, the bone graft resorption rate it can be fast resorbed slow resorbed or non resorbing so these three classifications should come should be written in this question and then describe the treatment option for 
grade 2 furcation defect uh, it includes first is the open flap debridement and then you have to mention about the GTR and then about the bone grafts so these are the treatment options available for grade 2 furcation defect next question is short essay on describe the rationale and procedure for GTR that has already been discussed next is aloe graft so aloe graft may first you have to write what is a bone graft then come and define what is aloe graft and then you have to mention the types of aloe graft that is freeze dried freeze dried bone aloe graft as well as demineralized freeze dried bone aloe graft and then you have to write how it is obtained how we prepare this fdba and dfdba then coming to enamel matrix proteins first again you have to define what is regeneration then you have to write what is emd uh, the commercial name of emd it is called endogen and then you have to write the indications of emd then clinical application and then mechanism of action of emd that much is enough for a short note then autogenous bone grafts autogenous bone graft also first define what is autogenous bone graft then you can write about the uh, bone from intraoral and extraoral sites from where all we can take intraoral and extraoral sites and then you have to mention about bone blend uh, osseous coagulum and also about the bone swaging then uh, classify bone graft materials used in periodontics that is already discussed then enumerate the various steps of resective osseous surgery this has been already discussed in the previous session uh, so there are four steps in uh, resective osseous surgery that is a uh, vertical grooving radicular blending then flattening the interproximal bone and gradualization of the marginal bone so all these four steps should be fitted then coming to alloplast alloplast me first you have to define uh, what is alloplast then you have to uh, write about the commonly used components of alloplast that is calcium phosphate hydroxyapatite then you can mention about the bioactive glass etc then citric acid in root biomodification it's a uh, straight cut answer from Karanza chapter 49 uh, page number 545 then osseous coagulum osseous coagulum also you can find in the same chapter it will come under autograft then coming to next chapter that is mucogingival surgery first is enumerate root coverage procedures discuss in detail about subepithelial connective tissue graft so first um, all the root coverage procedures you have to mention and then about the subepithelial connective tissue graft first give an introduction about it then the indications and contraindications and then the procedure uh, define a free gingival graft and describe the procedure for free gingival graft for precession coverage that was already discussed in previous session then classify recession and describe management of class 2 recession already discussed in previous discussion then uh, laterally displaced flap so laterally displaced flap first thing is you have to write what is laterally displaced flap then you have to write about the indication contraindication and the procedure steps and you can also mention about the variant stages uh, variant techniques of uh, lateral displaced flap and then diagram is necessary for this question then uh, classify recession and describe management of class 2 recession by soft tissue autograft okay so for classification uh, you have to refer uh, chapter 51 page number 563 atkins and miller's classification is there and then for management of class 2 recession by soft tissue autograft for free gingival graft refer page 560 for apically displaced flap 563 laterally displaced flap 567 coronary advanced flap along with that you have to mention about semilunar flap both you can find in page number 568 and then about the connective tissue graft in 569 you will get extra marks if you mention about the other techniques such as the gtr pouch and tunnel uh, pinhole technique vista method zuccelli's technique and use of ursula derma matrix then dento gingival transfer and periosteal transfer coming to the next chapter that is furcation involvement 
so classify bone graft and give describe the treatment option for grade 2 furcation defects that is already discussed second question classify furcation involvement and explain the rationale and management of grade 3 furcation involvement so classification of uh, furcation involvement you can find in chapter 50 page number 553 you have to mention two classification at least one is the clickman that is most important and second one is ham petal ham petal classification that is also available in Karanza. and then uh, you have to write about the management of grade 3 furcation involvement which includes open flap debridement then use of bone graft then the tunnel preparation then you have to mention about root resection hemisection and tooth resection uh, management of grade 2 furcation is already discussed uh, next question is hemisection hemisection you can write first uh, first define what is hemisection then you can write different names for the hemisection that is bicuspidization and all then indication contraindication advantages disadvantages and then the procedure for hemisection coming to next that is uh, occlusal evaluation so occlusal evaluation may the most commonly asked question is steps in coronoplasty so first you have to define what is coronoplasty when it is done that is in the indications you have to write and then the nine steps of the coronoplasty should be mentioned uh, up, up for each step you have to write at least one or two lines then uh, coming to the last chapter that is the periodontal restorative interrelationship biological width so biological width also you can find in chapter 55 periodontal restorative interrelationship page number 611 so here first you have to write what is biological width and then uh, you have to write the clinical significance of biological width then how do you evaluate biological width that is with the help of uh, transgingival probing or sounding and then in case if the biological width is violated how do you correct it so all this um, heading should be included under biological width so uh, that's that's the end of our perio question paper discussion uh, if you feel I have missed out any topics please let me know through the comment section okay thank you so much